Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you like any of the videos, you like what you're hearing, you like what you're seeing, please hit the like button, subscribe button, share it out. Here we talk any sports, but it's been mainly football. We get some great coaches on here. Um, anybody that wants to come on and talk some ball, you guys got an offensive play you like, offense you just want to talk about, defense, a drill, anything unique you do, or if it's just as simple as ever, and you want to come on here and present it in a talk, Please reach out. I love talking ball. I love meeting people and building these relationships. I'm having fun. Uh, so please share this out. Let's get this growing. I appreciate all of you, and I hope you enjoy the channel. Hey, guys. Welcome back to the show. Today I have the great goat of the beard, uh, Coach Tony Schiffman. I, I, feel, I, feel, I just trimmed mine because I saw some white hairs, so I said I got to get rid of it. Um, now I look like I'm 15 again. It's it's bad. Um, but I got him on here. Uh, I shot my shot again. And i on here, so it's great to have him. So, Coach, just in case people live under a rock and don't know yeah. who you are, could you please introduce yourself? Yeah. Uh, Tony Schiffman. I'm the offensive line coach at Lake Forest College, uh, previously the head football coach at Fort Madison High School in Fort Madison, Iowa. Um, and I am one of the co-hosts of the Hog Football Chat. Yeah, I've been missing those. I picked up a part-time job, and I work Monday nights usually. And I'm like, I'm just sneak into the corner, like looking. I'm like, I wonder what's going on. Like, yeah, uh, we're, we're we're starting back up the the regular, the regular regime. We'll be starting back up again right right around Thanksgiving. So it's, it's coming up the the weekly ones. We've been doing bi-weekly during the the downtime, kind of just because we didn't have football season. And and I know Jack's been Jack Jack actually has been having games, so it, it's been really me doing the majority of it but um i just felt that we, there had to be something during that that time so we we did the did the, the bi-weekly one but we'll be back to every week coming up um i haven't decided if we're gonna do the monday before thanksgiving or the monday after but should, sometime in november yeah in illinois we would have had our playoff show this past saturday so it was kind yeah. of sad we'd be going to now and it's crazy that like Football would be almost over by now. Like I'm, I don't know. It's sad. Right. It's uh, no politics talk, talk, Steve. No politics. All right. Good. <laughs> um. So, the first question I ask every coach, just to be because I'm stupid simple, is um, I always want to know how people got into coaching because it's always different. It's always some type of weird path that we're put on. Like yeah. I was 15 and I said I'm coaching. Like I knew right from the get go. Uh. Growing up in Oakwood, you know, right by Danville, I knew like a small town, that's what we had was football and I knew. Right. So how did you get into coaching? Like, you know, because now you're successful, you're, you're big time now. So how did you get into it? Uh, I'm definitely not big time. Um, I was actually the opposite. So I actually didn't get into coaching until a little bit later in the game. I was, um, I think, 26, just turned 27. Um, I had, I had originally wanted, so I wanted to be involved with the game. I wanted to be involved with football. Um, I was actually, I'd gone to grad school for, um, sports management. So I was going to do the opposite side of things. I was going to be on the, you know, my dream job at that point was player personnel or something with, with the, the, the GM doing, doing something on that side of things. Um, and just wasn't having any luck, wasn't enjoying grad school, um, and my former position coach, Mike Taylor at Springfield High School, he coached the offensive line. He had been named the head football coach at Springfield High School the year before. So basically, I was, it was going into his year, second year. Um, I had reached out to him and just said, hey, can I come help out? You know, I'm not wanting to do do this and kind of thought maybe let's let's try something else to be stay involved with the game. And, and he basically sat me down in his office and said, yes, you're going to help out. And you're also going to get your teaching certificate. And this is what, you know, this is what you should be doing, you know. So he was he was a big mentor in, in that regards to get me on that path. Um, and that was it. I mean, that was that was that. I, I can remember being in the being in the weight room the first time with with all the kids and, and lifting and just being hooked and and um, and just falling in love. So um, it was, you know, I, I owe a lot of my career to, to him um, and his like I said, his his mentorship and his kind of pushing me into into coaching and saying this is what you should be doing this is you're in, you're dumb if you're if you're not going to do this so um 
yeah. So, but yeah, like I said, it was, it was kind of the opposite. It was, it was sort of late in the game um, to get into it. Uh, but, you know, best decision I ever made. Yeah. It's amazing how I was, I wanted to be a teacher. Then I went to sports management. Hey, I went back. Like I'm still trying to do the teaching thing because Illinois sucks to be a teacher. They've make it. <laughs> it's like, you're trying to find buried treasure all of a sudden, like it, it, right. it make it so difficult. Um, but it's crazy. And then what's good about you waiting, I think, is that you're older. Like I was 18, 19, trying to tell 16 year olds what to do. Like they were telling me, shut the F up. You're like, you, you know, like you're only three years older. Right. So I think it kind of helped you out a little bit, probably that you're older. Like you could go in there. I'm older, you know, a little, little yeah, something, something. It, I mean, that didn't hurt. And I, I'd been, I mean, I, I coached at my, I mean, I went to Springfield high school, so I was able to coach my alma mater for seven years. Um, so I knew, I knew what kids had to do to win there. I knew how, you know, what they had, to, who they had to beat, what they had to do to beat those teams. And, and, and so it was good that I could kind of bring that different perspective in a little bit and, um, and have that, that kind of already built relationship with those guys, because I, I'd done everything that they'd done already. So that was, that was, that was a definite, definite piece that helped. Um. So what kind of offense were you around, like, playing there and then when you were coaching there? Like, because when I played, we were under center option offense. Right. Like, you didn't see spreads or anything like that. So I wanted to know, like, because you're, what, 31, right? You're only 31, right? Me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wish. No. Uh, we uh, – so when I played there, we were – when I played there, we were under center two back, like, almost split back veer type offense, um, pro con type stuff. Uh, with a tight end and and sometimes would flex them out very very different than what what they were when I got back the second go around so when I got back there they were they were essentially starting to go spread they'd been under center triple option um, for in the previous the previous regime uh, they were starting to go spread a little bit um, but it was a lot of under center spread um, and then sort of at the end of at the end of my first season of coaching, the head coach and I basically had talked about some things and he said, look, I want us to be a zone team. Our clinic season this year is going to be learning how to run inside outside zone. Um, and so that's what we did. And so we became a, um, a, a, you know, a shotgun 10 personnel inside outside zone team and really had a ton of success with it. Um, we were able to get some, some guys in that, you know, some kids that, that could play those spots and, and, and kind of, we got lucky. We got a really good quarterback that, that was, was there um, for four years. I'll, I'll, I think he was a freshman my first year. Um, and then, you know, by the time he was a senior, he was just a, an all state football player. So, uh, but we, we, we did a lot of those first couple of years that sort of adapted into that, that 10 personnel. We did some under center stuff the first year. And then we started to go shotgun and started to do some zone read and started to do some, some two back option option offense stuff. Um, so it really took a good, it, it evolved a lot over the the time that I was there. Um, and, and like I said, we had some kids that were able to really run it effectively. So it, it was, we had some good success. And then Rochester comes along and does the same thing. And well, they, I mean, they, we knew what Rochester was going to do just from them being around. And I, you know, I, I've known Derek for a while. I played college football with Derek. He was he was a quarterback at Illinois College while I was an offensive lineman. So I knew what he how what he was, what he was about, and how good he was because uh, I saw it firsthand. So um, I can still remember that first game we played Rochester. They that was a different team in 2010. Those because that was our best season um, that we had while I was there, and they just stomped us. I mean, it was. I think 49 to six at halftime. Um, and, you know, they just, they just took it to us, but I still, I always tell the story that, that, that game truthfully, because we came back in the second, not, I mean, didn't come back, but we, we played well in the second half and scored three touchdowns. I think that propelled us to the success we ended up having that year because we ended up finishing nine and three um, finished seven, two in the, in the regular season and, and got a home fo home playoff game. Um, but that success we had that second half of that game helped us helped us uh, to you know propel along the way. Yeah, um, Coach Hogan, who I coached for at Charleston, he was the defense coordinator in 2011 for Charleston. That was the best Charleston team ever. They were 11 and two, 
and they lost to Rochester in the final four. So I heard stories about Rochester and yeah. Uh, then they lost to him again the second the, in 2012. Charleston was on a path to go to the state title once again. Saw Derek in the second round, and that just went. Yeah. It was he. He is. I, I will. I will go to the grave arguing that he is one of the best coaches. He's definitely one of the best coaches, if not the best coach in Illinois, and one of the best offensive minds in in the nation for, among all levels of coaching. I mean, he's he does some things that just you look at it and just shake your head. And I mean, he, he, he will, he will beat you with his and then turn around and, and coach yours and beat you with yours. So, I mean, it's, or beat his with yours. So he's, he's, um he's just, he's just a phenomenal coach. Yeah. When does Illinois hire him to coach some offense over there? Yeah. It's never going to happen. <laughs> he's, he's happy where he's at. Yeah. I always wonder why he didn't go to college, but I mean, if you're winning, and you're in high school, just stay where you're at. Yeah. Just there's a lot, there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff at the college level that I don't think he wants to deal with, truthfully. Yeah, when he was first winning the state titles, I said that. Then the more he was staying there, I was like, there's a reason why he's staying. So well, he's had, I mean, he's had a rumor. There's been a rumor about him every season. Ever since I, I probably maybe not so much the first year, but maybe after they went back to back or even after they went three in a row the rumor started to fly like, oh, Derek's going here. Oh, he's going there. Oh, he's going to coach there. Oh, he's leaving. He's going there. And it's just, they're just rumors. I'm sure he, he laughs at them every time he hears them. Um, but, it, it, you know, they're always going to be around. Well, he, he did a clinic up here. You at like, talked to you. I, Derek was there. And I went and talked to him just because I've talked to him before. I was like, oh, hey, how's this going? And he's like, you're coaching up here now? And I said, yeah. And he goes, I would love to coach in Chicago. That's somebody – People may not know. He's like, I would love to coach in the suburbs. Yeah. Because my, my wife keeps me down by Rochester. Like, yeah. I think he wants to coach like a big time school for, for some reason. I don't know why, but he's like, I kind of want to coach up in the burbs. And people may not know. Like, oh. Right. Yeah. Like, I don't, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure he's got his dream jobs he's, he'd like to have. Um, it'll be curious to see what happens if he ever does leave where he goes. That's, that's, that's always going to be interesting. Um, so I know you've coached at different places. Like you need to correct me. Like, I think you've said Tennessee and North Carolina, maybe I can't. Yeah. Tennessee, um, North Carolina, then Tennessee, then Iowa, then back to, back to Illinois. So I thought moving from central Illinois, Charleston, up to huge, that's the, like, what made you say, well, I'm going to go to a different state and, and coach. Like I thought three hours was bit, bad enough. <laughs> right. So Basically, it was needing to, needing to find a full-time job um, and at the time trying to get as far away from central Illinois as possible uh, just because that was what, at that time frame, I mean, it was 2014, so you're talking six, six seven years ago. Um, just that's what I wanted to do, and, and so that took me out to North Carolina. Um, you know, in hindsight, it was, probably wasn't the – best move it, it it was great experience for me as a coach and as a teacher uh, it was it gave me my first head coaching experience as a as a track and field head coach um, but just not not what I was hoping for not and, and just the town was small it was so far away from my, my family that it just wasn't ideal um, and it just you know so that was kind of my my sort of reasoning for where, you know, my, my jobs have been sort of to try to get back closer to home, try to try to back, get back closer to family. And, and that's sort of what the path I've been on um, until now. Yeah. So what's football like in other states? Like, like how is it different? Like I was talking, I talked to coaches all over and I'm like, yeah, how, like, well, one, they're playing right now. So I'm like, you guys have something figured out. Like we're right. not playing. So like, well, what's North, North Carolina is not playing right now. They're, they're, they're uh, done. Um, but North, it was so the the school I was at in North Carolina would be very comparable to like a three or four A school in Illinois, um, small and rural, um, but good tough nosed kids. Um, we had that that season that I was in North Carolina, we had the best record in school history. Um, we actually we went ten and four um, and lost Thanksgiving week. Um, that was the only time I'd ever coached Thanksgiving up. Uh, you know late that late November so that was kind of cool but we went 10 and 4 uh lost in the quarterfinals um 
in North Carolina, they, they play 16 games to get, you know, if you, if you go 16 and 0, you're state champ. So they play a, a long season. Um, but it was, it was fun. I mean, I got to work for, got to work for a guy who was very, um, very established, um, won a lot of games in the state of North Carolina and just did things sort of his way, which were very different for me at the time. Um, I, I want to say that season, I mean, you're talking, we went from essentially August 1 to December 1. Um, I don't think we had a practice that lasted more than 60 minutes. Um, so just, yeah, you're talking, and we went 10 and 4. I mean, we never hit, we never tackled in practice. Um, we never did those sort of typical things that you see coaches or you see teams do. Um, and we had just phenomenal success. Um, so it, it was very, very different. And then, you know, making that, making that move to Tennessee, um, I got to work. Tennessee football, I think, is very underrated. I, I think Tennessee, the state of Tennessee, is one of the best states for football um, as far as schools, as far as coaches, as far as players. Um, it, it definitely gets um, a little bit of disrespect. Uh, but I was able to go there and work two years for Ron Lambert, who had a ton of success um, at the college level. So, you know, I got to learn a lot of great organizational skills and time management skills from him and just sort of learn how to run a program like, like a college, you know? Um, and then, you know, I, I, I took those lessons with me to Fort Madison to, to, to help that program um, kind of get off the, off the ground or not off the ground, but they, they'd sort of been on the floor and knocked the ground, knocked down for a long time. So kind of get them, jump started back up again and and um and then you know two years there and then uh got this job here at Lake Forest so yeah I've heard that about Tennessee how it's really really good football like yeah. I don't hear anything negative no uh, it, it's it's you get there are some programs in Tennessee that would dominate some good programs in Illinois like definitely, I I think I, I think then there now granted there are some some you know, it's not all of them. There are a few. It's not like it's going to be everybody because I, I mean I can remember, um, I think the year I was, the year I was in North Carolina, SHG actually played Memphis Whitehaven, and clocked them. I mean, and Whitehaven is is a perennial state champ in in, in the state of Tennessee, so. Uh, but that was that 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 2014 SHG team was that was like Malik Turner and Gabe Green. Those dudes were they didn't lose anybody, so they were they were pretty good. But um, yeah, Tennessee is very underrated in, in regards to football. I think. Now, didn't you tell me you applied for that Charleston job? I could have talked you out of that one. I don't think I did. I okay, think we I can remember. It. Yeah, we we talked. I you know what? Because when was that? What what year was that? Uh, 2015. I might have, because I might have been, that might have been when I was still in North Carolina looking to move. So I might have. I think yeah, you I, said that, and I said, good thing you, no offense. Yeah. You wouldn't have hired me. That would, that would have been the thing. But, <laughs> and Coach Hogan, who was, Coach Hogan, who was hired, if he listens to this, he'll tell you, like, you, you dodged a bullet. So it's fine. Yeah. See, I'm losing my mind. So I was like, I think he did, but I don't remember. I remember talking to you. I remember talking to you about it. I don't think I ever did apply. And if I did apply, I never got a um, I never interviewed. And I definitely I don't think I even got an email back about it or or, or contacted back about it. So I've got more think, than, I've got more of those than I do actually interviews, probably. Yeah, I've I'm not a teacher, so I, it's hard for me to be a head coach. I think I've talked to one. But a lot of people know who they want before they even yeah, go for it. So it's it's fine. It's it's it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, um. So have you ever? I know you're an offensive line guy. Have you ever coached any defense during your high school time, or has it always been offense? Not as a not as a full time guy. I've always when I was at Springfield High School, we always helped out. Um, it was always you know I would help out the defensive line during defensive period, and the defensive line coach would help out us during offensive period. Um, but never as a as a as a this is your spot. Um this is what you're going to coach. This is, you know, you're, you're in charge of the defensive line. So uh, never, never full time. Yeah. I, 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 could, I always ask that because I had to coach defense, right? I got to Charleston Hogan's like, you're going to be JV defense and help out the varsity defense. And I'd never done that before. Mm -hmm. 
but I understand offense so much better now because I did that. Like, yeah, if that sure. makes sense. Like, I, I mean, I've heard I've heard stories from people that say they they were better offensive coordinators after they coordinated a defense or after they coached defense, and I 100 percent see the reason why because you're you're finding you know your job as a defensive coordinator is to stop the offense and your job as the offensive coordinator is to find the holes in the defense and so if you as a you know if you're if you're coaching defense and know where your holes are as an offensive coordinator you can attack those spots so it, it i i get the the reasoning for it yeah i mean I, obviously you're 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 a prime example you don't need to do that but it helps up in the chicago area where we were seven eight a like i need to there's more two platoon teams. So now you really have to scheme, if that sure. makes sense. Like at Glombard East, that was the first time. We were two platoon. He brought me on. I said, he's like, you're going to do offensive line. I said, okay, what do you want me to do on defense? Because I'm so used to doing that. He goes, no, your offense, stay over there. Right. And it, and it was a college practice. We went this way, they went that way. And I, I didn't know what defense we ran the first two games. I had no idea what was going on. And you had to really scheme to come over and have the huddle sideline sitting there and like the offensive line and offense around you. I'm like, Oh my God, like what's going on. I'm used to like, they're all out playing defense. Right. Yeah. That was, that's yeah. I, I, I've, I've had both of those, those experiences for sure. We've had, I mean, I can remember at Springfield, we had a couple of times where um, the entire offensive line came off the field. Um, and then you look at our time and in, in my time in Iowa, um, that second year, our year two as a, at Fort Madison, our entire offensive line flipped around and played defense. So, I mean, we were – you had no time. You know, it took a couple games for us to develop a few backups on defense, um, but it was tough to sort of make adjustments and talk to those guys just because they were flipping around and going back and playing defense the entire game too. Yeah, Charles, when I was OC, I could talk to my quarterback and I could talk to like two or three linemen. Mm -hmm. yeah, the others had to be standing right by the defensive line coach to be rotated in. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times we got in arguments. I was like, no, they need to come over here real quick. Like, I need to do the – shut the F up. Like, they need to be over here and, like, this and that. And, right. Uh, then to go to Gobard East and see that, it was like, oh, my gosh. And then East Aurora, my offensive line did not play defense. So that was pretty nice. Um, yeah. Everyone else did. Like, that was the only one. We had – and then at Addison, we have 20-some linemen – 25 30 something like that yeah i have three lines going at the same time and i'm like oh my god so if you need some recruits you let me know we'll, we'll figure it out <laughs> maybe maybe um so what kind of offense did you run at fort mass i think you and i talked about it before like we're spread right before yeah, spread. So, we're spread. so our, our first year we they were they've been forever i mean shoot so i got there in 2000 17 I was there 2017 2018 seasons from probably gosh 10 years prior to my arrival there they ran some sort of wing offense whether it was single wing double wing you know flex bone some sort of three back offense um and so I don't know those you know that's not my expertise that's not what I want to run um, and they weren't having success. So it wasn't like, hey, they're, they're, they're killing people running this flex bone offense. Um, we're not going to do that. So I came in and put in the spread. Um, year one, we had a stud tailback, uh, Alex Gully. He rushed for 1,350 yards and was an all-state player. Um, and really, it's one of those things you look back in hindsight, you wish you'd given them the ball about 100 more times. I always, so their, their current head coach, Derek Doherty, I always joke with him about it because we, we're, we're good friends. And I always say, I would say, man, I wish we'd given him the ball like 80 more times, we, we, you know, but, um, but so we, we went to spread um, a lot of that first year. We had, a, we had a, a decent fullback. So we did a lot of 11 personnel uh, with that sort of sniffer back. Um, and then the, the second year there, um, we had a great quarter, a good quarterback coming back. We lost our running back. We lost some offensive linemen. Uh, but we had a lot of receivers coming back. So we said, what, let's let, you know, let's play to our advantages and let's go, you know, let's run four wide. Um, and, and, you know, and we did some good things. It, again, in, hi in hindsight, you kind of wish you had a little bit more of a running game and, and could have established the run a little bit more. But um, we had, I think, five, four, I think five guys that caught 25 passes. So, I mean, we, we threw the ball around a lot. 
um, and, and sort of did did some things that were good, but did some things that were bad too, and, and weren't great. So, uh, but it was it was kind of the adaptability of those offenses and being able to be be spread and be you know go. The the first year we had more success because we could go we could go ten and then we could go eleven um, and, and have some success doing it. The second year, like I said, we just we didn't have the bodies to do it, and and we were. A lot of our guys were going both ways, so we, we they were getting they were getting beat up a little bit, and so we just kind of did what we had to do to get through the season and and um, and, and and survive. Uh, were you guys up tempo? Were you just a like, yeah, we check with me? We weren't. We weren't like we weren't super fast NASCAR tempo, but we we tried to go to no huddle. Um, we, we went a couple, we had a couple times where we could go no, really fast, no, no, no huddle, fat NASCAR tempo. Uh, but for the most part, it was just kind of no huddle, go at a good pace, go at a good clip, um, and, and move. Well, if your offense is simple enough, um, like Mike, people think Mike Leach is up tempo. He's not, he could just signal it in. He already right. knows what he wants. It just looks fast. Like he just, it gradually will go fast and without thinking about it. It's, you don't have to practice it. It's just like, oh. 92, like 92, and you're done. Like, that's it. Right. Like, that's not how he does it. I'm a stupid moron, but I'm just like, oh, whatever it is. Uh, and I think you and I talked way back when, like, did you use wristbands when you did it? Did you do hand yeah. signals? So the first year we did wristbands and 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 um, and were pretty successful with it. And then year two, we we just wanted to go verbal, uh, verbal and hand signals. So we did mostly, well, not mostly, we did all verbal and hand signals, didn't use any any wristbands year two. Yeah, because I think I asked you advice on how to do it because I was in a rut at Charleston. I think that's what it was. And you said colors and wristbands or something. That's as easy as it can be. And I was yeah. like, and I, I brought it to the table. And they're like, no. I said, well, there, there, there's that idea. Was, <laughs> it really is. It's it's so it's so easy to do that. And, and again, like I said, I even, I probably, our first year, I probably made it more complicated because I, the wristbands we used the first two weeks were really, we were really good at it. But I wanted to be able to have more offense. I wanted to be able to do more things for more looks, and and so I changed it up a little bit. And we just we didn't have we still had success. Don't get me wrong, we still had, we don't still did really good things, but just we weren't as smooth as we were the first two weeks. Yeah, uh, we tried first bands before, and what happened was my playbook went from this to like this because I was like, mm -hmm. I need to put more on here. I need to do this. I need to do that, and so that's why I went to hand signals. But then it, it, it's. It, if I had film on me, you would laugh. I looked like a baseball coach when I was doing it. It was, right. it got too much. And so that's why at Glove Artists, we were a huddle spread team. You ever seen those before, a huddle spread team? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but it gives the ability to tag things. So like Mesh was Michigan. So we could be Michigan, Z post, and that was like as easy as it could be. Right. And uh, and then we kind of, and then at East Aurora, we kind of did the same thing, but it's here or there. Um, so what's it like building up a program that hasn't run the spread? You were trying to, like Fort Madison, you were trying to bring them back to the playoffs. Like what kind of goes into building a program, especially when you're changing it all? Like we're going to change it from the ground up. Um, it takes it, it takes patience and it takes really good assistance, truthfully. Uh, and, and we had both of those things the first year at Fort Madison. So we were able to really have – the success we had. I mean, you talk about success. I mean, we were four and five, uh, but they hadn't been four and five in probably five or six years. Um, so it was it was good to to do that and do those offensive things. Um, but it, it you know it we did a really good job of installing our offense. Um, we kept the same defense, so that wasn't anything that was overly difficult. It, you know, we had to learn. We had to teach to the new kids and the freshmen, obviously, but. Um, we did a good job of over that summer of installing our offense so that when we got to um, our first days of fall camp, they knew what was coming. They knew they could run our base offense. They could probably do, you know, our, our you know, they knew our two runs that we were going to run, two or three runs that we were going to run. Um, they knew our two or three passes that were going to be kind of our, our money makers. Uh, and, and, and so we could just rep, 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 and, and get all those reps at it and, and be successful with it. So that helped. Uh, and, I mean, they're still successful now. They, they just actually won their first playoff game two Fridays ago, their, their first playoff game in 31 years. Um, so 
you know, their, their coach Doherty kept a lot of the same things that we did uh, when I was there and sort of made them his own and adapted them for his, his thinking process and his terminology and, and, and the success has shown they're, they're still doing it. So it, it's something that it's frustrating. It was frustrating to watch as a coach because um, I can't coach. And so I felt like out of the loop a little bit, but uh, I, I'm, I'm super proud of what they've done and what he's done there. Um, and, 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 you know, you look at a, they're a, they're a program that I, I want to say, the last, so the last four years, they're actually, they're 18 and 18. Um, and before that, they were probably hadn't won 18 games in 15 years. You know, so it's, it's something that's really, that's really good that he's super proud of that I'm proud of those guys that they've kind of kept that going um, and, and haven't turned anything down. Yeah. I, I see all the stuff he posts. I'm like, Oh, good for them. Like I'm a little bit vicariously through them. Like, Oh, it's playoffs. Like yeah. we're sitting here, sitting here doing nothing. Well, yeah, I would, I would, I would piss him off probably because every Friday I would watch the games on YouTube and and I would be texting him like, "Hey, this play is there. Hey, this is there." Um, and sometimes he would listen. Sometimes he wouldn't get the messages until late. But I, I would always be giving him my input and trying to watch film and help him out as much as I could. And, and they had a great run. They should have done the virtual coach and set up Zoom for you. You could have the, something on there like. Talking yeah. to him like no, that wouldn't have been that wouldn't have been good. I would have I would have I would have probably not that would have been bad. What was it? Alaska or Cal? I can't remember. Someone did that. Yeah, and they could have done that for you. I mean, we don't you don't have to say what you would have said. You know, it's probably not kid appropriate, but we don't. No, have it, to... wouldn't, it wouldn't have been not kid appropriate. <laughs> it would have just been a minute. I would have my old offensive coordinator days would have kicked in, and I would have wanted to call the offense. And that they they've got a very capable capable coach doing that right now so um so what was like your bread and butter run plays and pass plays there like like air so rate first, stuff or first year the first year we had we were we were really good at power um because we had a, a good pullback who could kick out and and so that was kind of our our, our money maker was power and the um in the run game and then in the passing game we were, it was all quick passes i mean we we did not do a good job of working on a deep drop back passing game. It was a lot of, excuse me, quick stuff. Um, second year, we were heavy inside zone. Um, and, and we had, we started to sort of adapt a little bit in our, in our passing game. The one thing that we did a really good job was we called it Condor. Um, it was essentially a, a, you know, trips to the right or left and isolating that single receiver and, and had running a deep comeback. And that was kind of, you know, when we got into third and, third and medium or third and long that was sort of our our bread and butter like hey we're, let's get a first down run to the sticks and get a first down and, and that worked a lot for us that season really well yeah at Glenbard East we did the same thing we rolled out to it like mm -hmm. third and eight we every team knew it was coming but like if you got the kids it worked every time like right yeah and I had to bring that over to East Aurora I was like hey let's run this and all of a sudden it was like oh like this is I was like I didn't invent, reinvent the wheel I just gave you a suggestion like this right. is and power read, power read was our thing at East Aurora. And at Glombard East, we didn't run power read. We only ran power. He, All right. Walters hated power read. He hates not blocking somebody. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah. So we, we did the Ohio State thing where it was like inside zone to the left, but our right tackle arced this way, the other way. And mm -hmm. it was power read without the puller. And so I take that to the grave. Like, I'm going to run that for the rest of my life. Like, it was <laughs> – I think Ohio State stole it from us is where I'm going with. Like, there you go. That, that sounds good. Because I actually didn't see it. We actually drew it up. Like, what if we start doing this? And, right. and then all of a sudden I saw Ohio State do it. I was like, they stole it. Like, you see that. Like, they stole it <laughs> from us. Um, so are you a Navy fan or an Army fan? I couldn't remember. Navy. So how did you become a Navy fan? So my my – one of my best friends growing up, um, and I'm not sure how he became one because I don't think, I don't think his uh, his. Can you hear my dog whining? By the way, not really. I thought it was my dog. That's why no, I looked down. I was like, he's he's staring at me. He, he's whining. But anyways, um, no. Just growing up, one of my really really good best friends. Um, they would always watch the Army Navy game. I mean, they were big Navy fans growing up, and um. He ended up actually going to the Naval Academy. Um, 
I was lucky enough to go to two Army Navy games, um, and it just it just sort of became that was the team I watched. You know, I I that's still one of the only games. I'm very much when I watch college football on Saturdays, I flip. I can't watch just one game. Um, Army Navy is just about the only game that I will sit and watch that only game. I know there there's there's it's there aren't very many games other than that that's on that day, but even if there were 10, I'd only watch that game. It's so it, it just became that. And it's just sort of, I've adopted them as my, as my team. Um, and I don't have too many college football allegiances. I don't, I don't really, there's more, I have more teams I dislike than teams that I like in, in college football. So um, yeah, Navy's just sort of been the one that I've always kind of, kind of followed and, and, and really root for specifically. Yeah, when I was growing up, it was always Illinois because I grew up 20 minutes from right. the campus, and and then it became teams. Now it's more coaches. Now I follow yeah, more. I would definitely, I would say that too. I, I'm definitely much more of a coach follower than than a than a team follower right now. Because I used to, I mean, I was I was Illinois fan because my sisters and mom went there, um, and then uh, we watched. We liked Northwestern a lot because my father went there, and they were having success when I was in high school, um, and then it. it for a time it was Nebraska. Um, and, and then it's sort of, it sort of has always evolved. I've, I've always, I've got a, a couple, like I always, I always cheer for Michigan. Uh, one of my other good buddies is a huge Michigan fan. So I always sort of just gravitated towards Michigan. Um, I still will root for Illinois if they're, you know, if they, if I'm watching the game, but I don't really have, I don't follow them as much as I used to. Um, but uh, yeah, Navy, Michigan. Um, I like, They've changed a little bit, but I always used to, when when or when uh, Chip Kelly was at Oregon, I always used to try to watch them if they're on TV. Um, I'll always watch Mike Leach on TV if I can find it, just because it's so fascinating to me that he can, you know, he can do the things he does offensively. Well, not much this season, but he can normally, you know, in a normal year, he can do the things he does offensively with the, you know, with the play sheet the size of a sticky note. So it, it's always it's always kind of fascinating to me that that he can do that, but. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I will flip around and watch everybody as, as much as I can. Yeah, I'll have a game on the TV, split screen on the computer, and then I check on my phone. And my girlfriend's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, don't worry about what I'm doing. I have to do that, and then I'll switch it. And then right. if you stream too much, it pops up and says, you are straight, like too much is going on. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> damn, like, because uh, I'm a big Nick Saban guy, so people hate me, so I... Okay. People see all the time. I'm I'm always roll tied. I'm like roll tied. I'm like shut up. Like just. I'm a big Nick Saban guy. I don't know why. Hey, people have people have people are fans. It's okay. I won't judge you. Oh, you can judge me when I stop recording. You can tell me how you really feel. But no, it, I won't. I won't ever. I, that, that's that's the one thing. As long as as long as you're not a bandwagon fan, I don't care. Bandwagon fans, I can't. I have no time for. Well, I kind of stir the pot a little bit. I'm kind of a – so when pe people poked fun at me a couple of years ago, and every time they won, that's kind of how it kind of grew. Yeah. Because that was Nick Sa that was Nick Saban. So I kept putting on Twitter, like, roll tight, and I kept saying, shut up, or, oh, and they would lose. Like, oh, like, this or that. And I'm like – so I, I stir the pot a little bit. Right. Now, now when Nick Saban's done, I'll probably stop. But I'll still watch him, but I'll, I'll stop. Especially this year, their offense is nasty. This year, I can't. Yeah, they're they're always pretty good. It's pretty, pretty um, crazy. And Michigan looked good too the other night. They uh, maybe they had that that spread offense figured out finally. I don't know. Well, well, they've got so the 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 kid they got playing quarterback is the first time they've had a Jim Harbaugh recruit playing quarterback. So that's that's good. That's a good thing. Yeah, but Ohio State looks good too. It's yeah. Who they play? They played uh, oh Nebraska. Yeah, they played Nebraska. And Nebraska looked good for a quarter, and then right. went back to what they do. And uh, <laughs> but I'm an Illinois fan, so I can't talk about anything. Yeah. Um, uh, another team I'm liking this year is Coastal Carolina. I like their offense. Yeah, they're fun to watch. They've been on TV quite a bit too. That's a good. I think that's kind of the good thing. If you can point point one good positive thing out with the COVID is that you, you're we're getting to see a lot of teams on TV that we normally wouldn't. 
Um, you know, because you look at uh, Coastal Carolina has been on a bunch. Um, SMU has been on a bunch. Um, there, there's just been some good teams that, that normally, you know, you'd have to get to like ESPN Plus or something, and they're on mainstream networks now. So that's been fun. I just watched Dodgeball the other night. The ESPN ate the Ocho. Like, you need something like. Oh, she hated me. I was like, I'm going to watch Dodgeball and put on. She goes, what is this? I was like, you've never seen this? This is classic. Like, uh, so you finally made it to college. I know you've always said that was a goal. Um, why Lake Forest? Like, what What kind of said, okay, this is it? Like, why, why like. Because they hired me. Well, I was going to say, I don't know how to ask that question the right way. Like, um, like. Um, I, it was, it was, it was lucky, truthfully. Um, I knew some people who knew some people and were able to get in to the interview process. Um, and, and I'd known of Lake Forest College. I, I, like I said, I played at Illinois College, so we played Lake Forest College. So I knew of them. I, I, I remember hearing about them um, and, and always sort of followed. That's kind of my, I always sort of follow teams. So, well, like I, you know, obviously I played Illinois College, so I would always sort of follow everybody in that conference and look and see what they're doing and who's there and who's coaching there and how they're, you know, who they're, if they've got kids that I may have coached against that are on that team or anything like that. And so I'd always sort of known about them. And, and it just because, because I had been paying attention to Twitter one day, um, I saw that their, the previous, previous offensive line coach, offensive coordinator left to take a head coaching job. And so just kind of, on a whim, I emailed the the head coach and said, hey, I'd love to talk to you about this position. And um, it just so happens that I had a friend of mine who had coached uh, Coach Catanzaro in college reach out to me and said, hey, would you be interested in this? And, and it just kind of happened that way. So, I mean, it, it was it was super quick. I mean, I think I talked to Coach Cat on a Monday or Tuesday Um he, we had a phone interview on like a Wednesday. We had a in-person interview on a Friday. On that next that Friday, this is all in the same week. That Friday, um, I went to we had the Hog Football Chat Clinic at Whitewater that Saturday, Sunday, and then he called me Monday and offered me the job. I mean, so it was like within the span of a week that he had offered me the job, and then I think ten days later I was in Chicago working, you know, having spring ball day one. So it was very fast. Um, very, very quick turnaround, but, um, yeah. So, I mean, the, 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 as much as I wish there was a, uh, I had some sort of more deep connection. It's just that I, this was the job that I got. This was a job that I, you know, that they hired me for. So I was, I was super happy for it. Um, I'd had a couple close calls here and there and, um, a couple, you know, probably too many interviews to, to, to name. And, and, um, you know, that process is always fun, but, uh, you know, I was lucky enough to get, get this, this opportunity. I asked that question. I was like, my, my, my stupidity was coming out. Like I'm a football coach. I don't know. Like how, how do you ask this question? No. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, so what's a misconception about division three? Because when I was coaching a couple of years ago, um, I had kids, Division one or bust, division one, double A or bust, you know, those type of kids. And I, I was the jerk about the fifth time, they're juniors and seniors. I said, I called you as Northwestern called. No. And I was like, it's probably not going to happen. Like, I'm sorry. Like, and I said, nothing's wrong with division three, division two, nothing's wrong with it. So, what's a big misconception about division three? I think the two biggest misconceptions are one, that's bad football. Um, and two, that we can't give you any money. Like, that's the thing that people don't understand. Yeah, okay, yes, we can't give you ac athletic scholarships. We can't give you a full-ride athletic scholarship to play football. But we can give you $45,000 of, of academic money and, and, you know, financial aid money to come play football. Um, and, and so, you know, I think that the year, the year I got to Lake Forest, they had essentially finished their recruiting class. Um, so I didn't recruit year one because I came in April. Um, so I didn't start recruiting. I didn't recruit any of those kids for that class. But I think they gave out something like $1.5 or $1.6 million in, in grant money. Like ridiculous stuff that, that people always just think, oh, I, it's, it's going to be a, a liberal arts education. I'm going to have to pay 
such and such amount of dollars. No, that's not the case. Like I've even had kids that I've talked to in the recruiting world, like, Hey man, what's going on? Oh, coach, I can't go to Lake Forest. It's too expensive. Well, have you applied? Do you know how much money you're going to have to pay through financial aid? Like you don't know these answers yet. Don't tell me it's too expensive. And, and so th those are probably the two biggest ones is that the money's always going to be an issue and that the football is bad. Um, because I mean, I played division three football. I played against guys that played in the NFL. I played against guys that probably should have played in the NFL. I played against guys that should have been D1 players. I played against guys that were not, you know, I was a five foot 10, 190 pound offensive lineman. I, I had no, I had no dreams of playing in the NFL. Um, and there are guys like me at division three, but there are a lot more guys that are far better than me that are here as well. Um, yeah, like I think it was last year, a couple of years ago, Milliken had a high powered offense scoring 50 points a game. And I'm like, and the kid that talked to me as a wide receiver, I was like, you don't want to go do that. Like, look what they're doing. Like, and they're winning. They were winning that. I think it was two years ago. They were winning. Uh, and so I'm always like, and do you guys still do JV level or like a freshman JV level? We don't. There are there is JV at, at in Division three. We don't play JV football though. Okay, because I think some in Illinois might. I, I yeah, there are. Okay, I, I was went, excited. When I went to August, even when I was at Illinois College, we did. But I went to Augustana my freshman year, and we we played four or five. Uh, when I was at Augie, we or when I was at IC, we played three or four. My first year there, I played JV, and I think we played like we played like Wesleyan. Uh, we played. Oh, no, I'm drawing a blank. Blackburn, mm -hmm. um, somebody else. So, yeah, we played a couple of D3 games or, or JV games. Yeah, because I tried to sell that to the kids. I was like, like some programs have a JV level, so you're not going to wait. You could go play, you know, or have the opportunity to play right when you get there. You don't have to wait. And so I try to help you guys out. I'm like, hey, you know, this this is not a bad idea right. to go Division three. It can work out. Um You've been asked this question a million times. I'm, like, I'm going to ask it a little different. I know recruiting for a lot of people has been the biggest adjustment, you know, when you go for high school, because we recruit basketball players. We recruit to come play. Sure. So how did you adapt to recruiting? Did you just take bits and pieces of that type of recruiting into this? Yeah. It, I mean, look, recruiting, every, everybody's going to be different when it comes to recruiting. That's the thing that I think coaches have a hard time understanding. Like, I'm not going to be the same recruiter as somebody else. I'm not going to recruit the same as somebody else. Uh, but at the end, it's all about building relationships uh, and and letting those guys know that there is some sort of genuine care. I mean, that's that's the thing. Like, if a kid that I build a relationship with via recruiting doesn't come to our school, I'm not going to be a dick and never talk to that kid again. No, I'm going to wish him the best of luck and tell him if he needs anything to to reach out and 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 ask me any questions he has and that's happened before. So um, I will never recruiting is, is can be a ruthless business. Um, but at the end of the day, it's not about us. It's about those kids that are trying to get an opportunity to play college sports. And that's in my mind, that's what's most important. So um, if I can build those relationships and get those kids, you know, the big thing for us, is if we can get a kid on campus, uh, we can probably get them hooked. And so that, that's all it's about. It's about building those relationships, building that trust, getting those guys to come come see what we're about and buying into what we're about. Um, and that's how you build good recruiting classes. And that's how you get the players that you want to get. Yeah, because I think I've heard you, I've listened to some things you've been on, and that's the question they always ask you. What's the big difference? And I, I answer it before you answer it. I'm like, recruiting, because football is football. Yeah, I mean, it's recruiting, and, and, and especially this year during COVID, I mean, it's been – nonstop recruiting. And so it's been for the division three level, it's, it never ends anyways, but it's been like ramped up, never ending. And, and, and that, that's the big one. And then truthfully, just being a full-time coach is you don't have to worry about anything else. I don't have to do lesson plans. I don't have to worry about curriculum. I don't have to have a, you know, a, 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 a meeting about IEPs or anything like that. So it's, 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 those have been sort of weights lifted off my shoulders too um i'm drawing a blank see i was gonna ask you something and it just flies by me um so we'll wrap it up i've taken a lot of your time i i ramble on a little bit um <laughs> so how'd you come up with your podcast were you just like me and was like it's covid where i'm 
going to start doing it. So I, and I've been horrible with it. So um, it was March, late March. Yeah, it was late March because it was right before I moved because I moved to Kenosha the first weekend in April. Um, Late March, and I was just like, you know what? I should do this. Like, it's not hard. I talked to the people at Platform, and they were they were fantastic enough to do all the editing and everything for me. Um, and so I just started doing it. And I mean, I think I recorded in the first three weeks, I think I recorded like 65 episodes. And so the, the stuff that I'm just airing that, that, that that's being aired now, like those are from like April and May. Cause I, I think I, I haven't recorded and this is horrible. I didn't record an episode. Um, I just did one today and I've got a couple guys scheduled, but I don't think I'd recorded until today since like the end of May but I still had enough stuff sort of in the bank that I can keep posting them. Um, but it's just, it, for me, it was just an excuse to talk to guys. And it's sort of, my, my podcast has sort of adapted over the years. Uh, I think we talked about this off before we started recording. Um, mine sort of become more of a career-based podcast than anything else. You know, I've got a couple offensive line questions that I ask guys, but everything else is sort of just about career and things that kind of, interest me in in their in their biographies or in their coaching careers so um and and it's mine are very short I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing but I think mine go anywhere from like 17 minutes to 30 minutes or something so like mine are super short get them kind of in and out and done and, and and over with like I don't have like you've had great questions to ask I don't have I usually ask them the two offensive line questions and then two career bio questions like that's it so I just want to get like that's kind of my thing um but it's it's just been it's been fun being able to talk to some guys and get some get some fun names out there and and talk to some people that I've got some some you know good good stories from and good content from yeah see I'm going by the seat of my pants so like <laughs> I always am afraid that I don't want to waste people's time like oh it was 15 minutes. Like he just wasted my time. And then right. I'm like, Oh my God, it's been an hour, hour and a half. And so I'm just kind of like, screw it. It's, it's mine. I'm going to go do what I kind of want with it. And if the guy I'm talking to is okay with it, we go with it. And then I fall out listening to Joe Rogan again. And I'm like, Oh, his are four hours. I'm doing fine. Like, right. Don't tell the principal, but I might listen to that at school. Sometimes I have Joe Rogan on my phone somewhere, like during zoom, like listening <laughs> to that. And, uh, I'm not going to pull out anything that he does, but right. I'm going off, off topic again, but like I actually watch him to figure out how to do a podcast because people can say what he, they want. He knows how to talk to people and that's how he can just yeah. go. So uh, truthfully, truthfully, the, the one that I watched to kind of learn how to do it was the guy who does the, um, oh man, what's his name? The guy who does the hot wings with the guys, with the people. Oh, yeah. That's sort of who I watched to kind of learn how to do it. Because that's, you know, because he's, he's very much, he asks a lot of questions about people's careers and things like that. So uh, that's kind of the one who I, I watched kind of odd, funnily enough. Yeah, that's probably who I should have watched more than Joe Rogan. But like <laughs> the stuff Joe Rogan and them talk about, you're just like, you can't, it's a, it's a car wreck. You can't help but look and right. listen to what they're saying. Right. Uh, what's the one I just watched one with him and Ronnie Coleman of all people. And so I watched that at, and, uh, well, coach, that's all I got for you. So I appreciate you taking all my Joe Rogan time here <laughs> and, and doing this. No, yeah, no, no problem. Thank you. Thanks for having me guys. Go check out the hog football chat on Twitter. When it happens on Mondays, uh, go check out coaches podcast during quarantine. If I took the dog on a walk, I had it playing, listening to the different coaches. So go check it out. Uh, Stay safe, and we'll see you guys next time.